Ooh, ouch. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Ooh, your hands so strong. Ooh, they so strong. Your hands are strong. Ooh, you got so much strength in your hands. Ooh, you, ooh. Ooh, Aunt Jamie, don't touch my titty. You're going to make me start doing something I don't want to do now, Jamie. You better stop now, Jamie. You better stop. Jesus. <laughs> What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tunji's Podcast. I am your host, Tunji Taylor Lewis. Y'all, how you doing? How's everything going? Um, today, you know what the great part about taking a break, just a little bit of a break from creating and just giving yourself, giving your mind a chance to rest is like when you come back, the week that you come back, you have a whole bunch of stuff on your mind. You got a whole bunch of stuff that you want to get off your chest. And, uh, you know, yesterday I kind of talked about how leaders are, you know, awkward in uh, social situations. And today I sort of had another thought about how, you know, my, there's, you know, like how my strength is also my weakness, right? My, my strength um, is obviously, you know, performing, you know, entertaining people, making people laugh, making people feel good, whether it's on stage or whether it's on social media or whether it's with content creation. Uh, that's been a strength of mine since I was young. That's always been a strength of mine. But I've realized um, recently that that's also a, uh, that's also a huge a weakness of mine um, in that it's going to be a weakness of mine navigating the entertainment industry. Here's what I mean by that. Um, the entertainment industry is an interesting one. It's one where you got to, you have to watch out for your own back. You have to uh, make sure that you're looking out for number one. You got to make sure that you're not being uh, taken advantage of. Um, in any sort of situation, especially as an actor, especially as talent, because, you know, um, executives, you know, in the entertainment industry, you know, they'll do a whole bunch of crazy stuff to, you know, have leverage over you and, and to, you know, and to keep you, to keep you down and to keep you, you know, begging them for like any and every opportunity. And, um, the reason why I say that my love for performing is going to be a weakness of mine is because that's the thing that's going to prevent me from making objective decisions about what's good for me and what's not because I love performing so much that even if I am performing and even if I'm entertaining people in a venue or in a situation that really isn't good for me and really like ultimately speaking like you know whether it's business supplies whether it's monetary value whether it's the way I'm being treated I I noticed that with me I have a tendency for to forget about all the stuff that's frustrating me about a situation if I'm getting a good enough opportunity to perform you know what I mean like so when I perform and I've created good work and I've entertained people, I've made them feel good, I've made them laugh. That makes me feel so good that I'll forget that the people that are sort of giving me the platform to do so are really being really shitty to me, right? Um, and I'm not saying that I've been through anything drastic like that, um, but if I, if I were to go through something like that in the, in the future, that would be the thing. Like I would sort of get into a headspace of, you know, gratitude and, and uh, you know, just, just feeling all good and fluffy and just being grateful to like these people who are like giving me this opportunity. But, and, and yet at the same time, they could be, you know, just in a, as an example, um, taking more money um, from a, from a show or from a production that they should be taking or like taking advantage of me or not giving me my fair piece of the pie and by the way this is something that happens to artists all the time you know using the music industry for example like there are countless stories of artists you know being given money for you know possessions and getting to go on tour and getting to be famous like that's like that's that's like sort of the drug that gets fed to a lot of artists in order to in order for us to be taken advantage of it's like you know executives will like put us on give us a platform give us fame you know in the case of boy in the case of dudes have girls you know chasing us and like wanting us you know they'll they'll feed our ego basically and and yet on the backside they're completely ripping us off 
and um, you know you that that even happened in the documentary about um, about uh, what's that group called sunny days oh man I'm losing my black heart totally right now um, everybody loves them oh, can you stand what what's their name somebody help me out here I'm losing my black heart so bad right now. can you stand the rain What's their name? What's their name? I have to look it up right now. New Edition. I knew that. Uh, so in the New Edition documentary, this is what happened to them for like the majority of their careers. Like they were, you know, given all this fame, you know, money, you know, the executives would promise their mothers that the kids would get paid and they would never get paid uh, because these executives are terrible people. And, uh, and you know, that's, that's definitely something that I've noticed within myself and I definitely want to make sure that I, I, I I'm aware of it and I know how to how to manage it so that you know with every decision that I'm making whenever I'm making a decision to collaborate with somebody or I'm making a decision to join forces with somebody or if there's a situation that I'm in I notice that it's bad and I need to get out of I need to make sure that my love for performing and my love for entertaining people um, especially, you know, on a large scale, doesn't um, doesn't affect my ability to make an objective decision because, you know, people talk about all the times about how to not to not make a decision while you're angry, while you're upset about something. But it's also not a good idea to make a uh, a decision when you're overly happy and you're overly joyous, right? And you're and, and all of those uh, good and loving emotions because, you know, uh, to use another analogy, I just talked about music, but athletes go through this all the time, right? And uh, it's, it's starting to change now in the modern day, like, you know, you're seeing in the NBA and the NFL how players are starting to put themselves in the best position to win a championship. But before that era, like, there was a time where, you know, all-time great athletes would stay loyal to a team that clearly wasn't prioritizing winning they were prioritizing money they were prioritizing ticket sales and as long as they were getting enough with this star quarterback being box office material or this you know star shooting guard being box office material they didn't really care if you made it all the way to the nba playoffs but that's what the player cared about and these executives and these general managers and these owners will say anything and everything to these players to make them want to stay in that city they'll talk about how much the player means to the city um all the connections that they've built there you know the love that they have for the teammates the hometown love all of that stuff all of that you know uh lovey-dovey stuff which is important which is an important part of the human experience but i'm not denying that but ultimately that player's dream is to win an nba championship and so Side note, that's why LeBron James is a genius because he just like made a very, very objective decision. He left his hometown. He was from Ohio. He was playing in Cleveland for years. He was beloved there. And when he left, everybody hated him for it. You know what I'm saying? But he was still able to have the presence of mind to go, okay, if my objective is to win a championship, the best thing I sh for me to do is to leave Miami, uh, sorry, to leave Cleveland and join forces with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh in Miami. And um, so with that being said, I kind of want to be able to be like LeBron James where even if I'm feeling all fluffy duffy about a situation, even if I love certain aspects of the situation, I want to be able to look at the overview of the situation and just really look like, okay, is this really good for me right now? Is this gonna help me get to where I wanna go? And even though I really love this part of it, um, I shouldn't allow this part of it to make me forget. I shouldn't allow the, the pros to make me forget all about the cons, because the cons are still there. And uh, a lot of times, you know, people in authority will use the cons to use the pros to distract you from the cons, right? So. Yeah, so that's just sort of a, a weakness that I know is within myself. Um, that's just life, you know. Sometimes your sometimes your weakness is within your your strength, and so uh, that's one thing I want to watch out there, watch out for. You know, going into the future, you know, hopefully I don't make any wrong decisions based on you know um, highly good emotions. So that's it for now, y'all. Peace out.